Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level of Tuts, and today I'm going to be talking about CSS animation. And if you noticed before, we use something called transition. And transition is something that's going to take place on like a status change when you're hovering or something. This is something that you can have animating just any old time, um, and it's pretty cool. However, it only works on IE 10. It only works on uh, Firefox 5 and up with the Mozilla prefix, Chrome 4 and up with the WebKit prefix, Safari 4 and up with the uh, WebKit prefix, Opera 12 with the O prefix, and pretty much any version of Android or Safari with the WebKit prefix. And we're going to first create a div, and I'm just going to create a random mold div. I'm going to put it just right up top here in our HTML, and I'm going to uh, animate this so that it's rotating 360 degrees constantly forever. So let's check this out. Inside of our um, header here, I'm just going to make a div and I'm going to give it a class and it's just going to be it's going to be spin and I'm going to say this div is just going to spin. It's not even going to contain anything. It's just going to be a div. Okay, so let's go to our CSS and I'm going to say for the class of spin, you're going to be, uh, let's say, width, it'll be, we'll say 100 pixels width. It's going to be a perfect square height. It's also going to be 100 pixels. And the background color is going to be white, just because the background is purple and we want to stand out. Okay. So here is our div. Let's go to our page to make sure it's showing up okay. Here's our white div. Same size as our logo right here. It's just going to be spinning underneath it. Okay. So how do we approach this? Well, with CSS uh, transition, what you had to do is you had to put the transition on the item. And then when you had a hover state, that's where you had the property change. So then it transitioned into that property. Well, for animation, you actually have to build out your animation separately. It's using a completely different syntax than we might be used to. Okay, so I'm going to write out the first one and then I'll copy and paste and fill in the second one. So we're going to start out with WebKit and you're going to use an at. And the at and then WebKit and then hyphen keyframes. And then you're going to name your animation. It's whatever you want. So we're just going to call this spin. And then we have brackets. Okay, so now comes the time where you need to decide what happens at what point in your animation. So we're going to say at 0% of the way through the animation, then brackets, we're going to say uh, it's going to rotate. And since this is only WebKit, we only need the uh, WebKit rotation. So I'm going to grab this WebKit rotation, I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to say 0 degrees. Because at the start of our animation, we only want it to be rotate, we want it to be at 0, okay? And by the end of our animation, which is 100% of the way through our animation, we want it to be 360 degrees. We want it to be all the way back to uh, the start. So here is our animation. Now to build this out, I'm just going to paste this a couple of times. What we need here is several different animations, just like we have with our vendor prefixes before. This is going to be M-O-Z, and this is going to be O, and not zero. It's going to be O, OK? And this last one is just going to be keyframes at keyframes, just like this. And of course, I still have this WebKit transition in here, so I need to change these as well. Okay, and let's just get rid of these. Okay, so here's our animation, and it's going to work on all of these different browsers. We have our browser prefixes and everything. If we save this, you'll notice there's nothing telling what is going to be using this animation, what's going to be spinning here. Uh, so we want to put something in here with our spin, and this is maybe a little bit more like you'd expect to see. And we need to have, again, all of these vendor prefixes. And, you know, if you'll notice here, it's getting a little bit, I mean, we have a lot of code to just do this, rotate. But, you know, this is the way that uh, CSS3 is working right now. So 
uh, we just have to deal with it. And that's why there's things like CSS3, please, to help us out. You can copy and paste code from there really quickly. And uh, or if you are into SAS and Compass, it's also great for CSS3. Okay, so for here, uh, this is the name of our animation, like we had called it before. You can call it anything. Spin, and we're gonna say it's gonna take five seconds to spin 360 degrees, and it's gonna do that infinitely. Now keep in mind that this property can be set to a specific number. If you say two, it's gonna go through twice and then stop. Infinite, is, so it's either a number or it's infinite. So other things you can have as the uh, for properties of your animation, you can also have a delay. If you're if you put a number in front of here, it's going to be a delay. You can have a timing function, so you can do easing, just sort of like you did with transition, um, and you can even give it a direction, whether it's um, you know normal or alternate. So if this uh, were to go alternating you'd see it rotate one way and then rotate back the other way. Well, let's actually just check this out and see our object rotating. Let me refresh this. And just like that, over the course of five seconds, this thing rotates. Uh, although, one, okay, rotates 360. So you'll notice that it's spinning 360 degrees, slowing down, stopping, and then going again. What happens if we want this to be sort of evenly spinning the entire time. Well, the default for animation, uh, for the timing function of animation, is actually ease. So what we want to be able to do is we want to set this to be linear. So let's come back up here and, and then after our duration, we would just want to write linear. Okay, I'm going to copy and paste this down below. And they'll all have it. Okay, now let's refresh this. And as you can see, we have a constantly rotating cube. Cool, even better. Okay, well, what, let's actually try one more thing. I'm gonna show you this animation on hover. So we're gonna take this same code, I'm gonna pull it out of here, and then I'm going to do spin hover animation. Okay. So let's refresh this. Our cube's not spinning. We rotate, it hovers. Off, hover, off. Okay, well this is how you control rotation and animation. You can get some really cool things going. You can animate anything just like you could with uh, transition. You could have things flying around, whatever you want. Keep it tasteful, keep it cool, but uh, keep it limitless. Try to figure out interesting combinations of things to use and try to do something that no one else has done before. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions, please hit me up on Twitter, Level Up Tuts. Um, or, you know, we're on Facebook now. Check us out there. Let us know what you're thinking. Um, and thanks for watching. Bye.